If you observe the world, you are going to see a lot of uh, situations where some events happen, and as a result, you think that as a result of certain events, some outcomes occur. And you can look at those events and those outcomes and say, well, if certain events happen, it's likely that some outcomes, some other events will come out of it because of these initial events. But what's nice about the theory is that they can break all these very complex phenomena that has so many agents, so many variables influencing a certain outcome of a given phenomena and simplifying things and explaining the whys and the how some of these important key variables or factors impact the outcome of a given phenomenon. So the theory simplifies this complex world, telling a story and trying to explain why or how a certain phenomena will happen or what are the outcomes of certain phenomena, explaining the processes, explaining the, the, uh, the logics by which some events impact others. I know it's a very abstract way of explaining well, things. The reason, one of the reasons I asked you about it is I, I think you're really good at writing theory, but, but in addition to that, I've, you know, I've been reading and even writing about big data and predictive analytics and things like that. But just this morning I was reading an article about it where they were using big data to basically improve their human resources strategy and tactics, okay? And I thought, oh my, you know, they're just using a shotgun approach here. They're not using a theoretical lens. And, and why is it so important to use a theoretical lens and not just use big data? But one interesting facet about building theory is that it is also possible to build theory from data. So a lot of the older theories that we know, they tell a story and then you check whether that story really applies in the real world or whether if companies or individuals that follow that that logic will do better or worse. But if you look carefully at, at many of those uh, old seminal theoretical pieces, a lot of what they do is build that story based on what they see in the real world. So one key way of building theory is to looking at all this information and trying to make sense of it. So not only, let's say, if you look at big data, different types of uh, information from consumers or patterns in, in distribution performance and see, well, if certain patterns happen, firms will do better. If you just make those connections and say, well, if these patterns happen, I should see better outcomes. This is not theory. But if from the data you try to make sense of why why is the connection between all these factors impact this different outcome? It is possible to build theory from observing the data. Wow, that's a good distinction, Adriana, because I think it's easy to jump to the conclusion that when data-driven theory exists, that it's not theory, but it can be. Actually, there is a big push from management scholars to say, well, let's stop the whole theorizing thing. We are simplifying things too much. Let's stop and let's take a pause button and take a look at the real world and see what's going on out there. And let's observe the real world and explain, try to explain what is happening without looking at these predefined frames, if you will. So let's the real world tell us what is actually happening. If you take a look at one of my favorite papers, is Emerson, 1962, it's a very old paper. So it's one of the key seminal pieces that triggered the development of resource dependence theory. And they talk a lot about the dynamics between individuals, more powerful, more dependent individuals, and how the most dependent individual try to minimize that power dependence imbalance. If you look at all the logics, all the new terminology that he introduces, there is very little uh, acknowledgement of previous theories. It's all on the observations of human behavior in terms of interacting with each other. 
The same thing is true for some of the foundational pieces of social exchange theory for observing individuals, kids at play.